copyright disclaimer under the Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by a copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips to balance in favor of fair use. Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Fresh graves of Muslims mm -hmm. killing each other. It's just fresh graves, all for just recently done. It's like, what's happening in our communities? Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in your communities. It's cool to be violent because you're not Ahlul Bidah. So now you turn Islam into Christianity. You can't tell me that that was an infiltration. Nobody can tell me that, I'm sorry. Nobody can tell me that the government didn't have a, a, a hand in that. You know, because every single time black people are progressing, they're building something for themselves, it's always a, a devilish, bloody white hand behind it to try to destroy it. And that's exactly what I, what I, what I think happened. You know, I'll put money but, on that. Go ahead. But you know, the, the two most, the two most monitored communities are the black community and the Muslim community. So yeah. if you combine that, you combine those two to one, mm -hmm. you know, oh, you, you got to know Islam mixed with black. Oh, of course, so, of course, uh, white people are going to see it as a threat. White supremacists are going to see that as a threat. Of course, these are the two top and who when the Spanish and the uh, Spanish Inquisition made that pure blood law. Who were they speaking against? They were speaking against the blacks, blacks in, in, in Europe and against the Muslims in Europe, specifically. Specifically, was, so like duh, these people have done declared war on you. You know what I mean? It's us who have to wake up because that's an us problem. It, that's an us problem. The enemy is doing what the enemy does. And they've always yeah. been doing what the enemy does. Now you have this Islam. You believe in Allah, you believe in the Quran, you believe in the Sunnah. What are you going to do with that to get yourself out of this condition? That's an us problem. We have to fix that. All this, and that, that's why I don't go after Muslims. Like, you don't never see me talking about like, you know, going after these Muslims and going online like that. You know, I don't believe in that because I've seen the destruction it does. You see what I'm saying? And, 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 and the, the fitna, the destruction of the heart. Yeah. The Straight destruction up. of the heart was real because think about it. If you're Islam, like you said, Islam, it almost became like Islam was refutation. Yeah. So if your Islam, if your Islam is dwindled down to what's the latest PDF refutation this week, mm -hmm. like who's kicked off the minhaj this, this month? Everybody, let's scramble. Let's run. Let's run to Salafi talk. Let's scramble to the internet and yeah. find out who who's kicked off now. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 gossip. Yeah, that's all it's, it is. It, those are diseases of the heart. That's exactly. disease of the heart. Exactly. But they package it. So of course, no, brother. It's not gossip. What we're doing is that we are doing tasfi or tarbiya. You know, we are pure. We are we are purifying the religion from the things that are foreign in it, and we're cultivating the people upon it. That's what it, that's what we're doing, you know. The reputations are necessary to, to purify the. Yeah, he just 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 shut the hell up, man. We don't need your help, man. Like straight up, man. You destroyed enough families. You destroyed enough reputations. You see what I'm saying? You know, you, you destroyed uh, an, an uh, entire it, communities with this. Entire communities. Mm -hmm. You destroyed lives, and people left Islam because of you. You know what I'm saying? Because of because of yes. this. You know what I mean? Oh, anyways, yes. keep going. That that that's that started. I, then that started brothers who brothers with the biggest beards and wore robes to work, and they were supposed to be on the sunnah. All of a sudden, oh yeah, you know that brother. He's you know he's a Hebrew Israelite now. A Hebrew Israelite. What are you talking about? Yeah. That's he was the the vanguard of the sunnah. What are you talking about? He's a he's a Hebrew Israelite now. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? He's a Christian now. What are you talking about? He's an atheist now. 
Yeah. And, and I saw that, like, brothers who were known to be on the Sunnah, sisters that were known to be on the Sunnah, children from families that were known to be firm upon the Dawah, mm. were, so upon let's keep it real, Our sisters, you had, you had children going out, women taking their, uh, their uh, bias off. Yeah. You know, I've heard, I've heard stories of sisters going to sh work at strip clubs. Mm hmm Subhanallah. From, from Salafi families. Yep. Grew up with uh, niqab, your bad, the whole nine yards. Getting pregnant by thugs. You know, getting pregnant by drug dealers. Having children out of wedlock. Uh, going going back into whatever lifestyle they were in previously. Mm -hmm. So all this destruction that took place because of this. Complete 360. You know what yes. I mean? Everything was fine. You're heading in the right direction. These friggin' foreigners came into our lives. These British, these Saudis, you know what I mean? Talking about issues in, in our communities, particularly the black community, especially, and I put a video about, uh, about that, you know, how many black Duat have been refuted? How many? A long list, an unbelievable list. <laughs> I'm going to mention uh, to you a list of names, okay? I'm going to mention to you a list of names, and I'm going to t tell you something that is common about all of them, okay? So, what do, um, uh, let's see, what do Abu Muslima, Siraj Wahaj, Bilal Phillips, Abdul Hakim Quick, Abu Usama al Dhahabi? Farid Abdullah, Dawood Adib, Akil Walker, Akil Ingram, Shadid Muhammad, Abu Alia, uh, Mufti Munir, Tahir Wyatt, and I can go on and on and on, but what do all of these duat have in common? What do they all have in common? Does anybody know? Abu Muslima, Dawood Adib, Siraj Wahaj, uh, Abdul Hakim Quick, Bilal Phillips, uh, Shadid Muhammad, Mufti Munir, Tahir Wyatt, Akil Walker, Akil Ingram. Exactly. Rabia, she got it on the nail. They are all black. They're all black. What else do all of them have in common? Corporate America profits from the destruction of dysfunction of, of people. Of color, so everyone has uh, stock in disturbing and spurring blacks' upward progress. They're all black and work with uh, sincerity, yes, with the inner city, right? And not only are they all black and they all work with the inner city, there's something else very specific that each and every single one of them have in common. All of them. They're all black. They all work within the community. All their work is tangible within the community. We can all see as black people their work. They are dangerous. Okay, they are dangerous. But we're, we're getting very, very close now, Knacker. We're getting very close. Right? So they're dangerous. They, right? What do they, each and every single one of them have this one thing in common? Right? They're dangerous. They work with uplifting the youth. Okay, yes. They work with uplifting the youth, so we understand they're all black. They work with the youth, uplifting the youth. They work with the inner city. There's one more thing that is a, a, a common with all of them, all of them. It's the same thing with all of them. And you will not find this thing with the in the Indo-Pak community. You will not find this thing with the Arab community. You will not find this thing even amongst white Duat. You will not find it. This one thing. Exactly. Thank you, Rabia. Thank you, Rabia. That's exactly it. That is exactly it. They were all thrown off the menhaj. They were all thrown off the menhaj. All of them. When they were doing work, when they were putting work into the community, when they were building, when they were uh, helping people in the community, that we all, all of us, we know the work that they were doing. And every last one of them were thrown off the men hedge. And I remember even way back when I was young, when I just first became Muslim, 15, 16 years old, I used to listen to um, 
Imam Siraj, you know, and uh, Abdul Hakim Quot, and they both said, without any dust, without any um, question, that yes, the feds get involved into the affairs of the Muslims. You know what I'm saying? You cannot be an independent black dua in the West without these guys talking about you. It's impossible. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So they destroy mm. these communities, right? And now the, the one who came into Islam sincerely, seeking Allah's face, seeking Allah's mercy, you told, you told that person Allah's mercy in, is in reputation. He cuts off his brother. He cuts off his, 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 his wife. He cuts off his children. And now he's left by him to, to his, himself and his whims. He can't trust anybody. And now he goes right back to where he started. He started off smoking weed. He's back smoking weed. He started off a Christian. He's back a Christian. He's, he started, he, go ahead. Yes. Well, and plus the simple fact that even though it start it started before 9 11 mm. 9 11 the in, how it intensified mm. like you don't see that you don't you don't see that after 9 11 this whole thing intensified it went into course. overdrive yeah like you don't think there's a connection between these two things exactly you don't think there is 100 percent it has to be a connection. of course there was what happened after 9-11? How many uh, brothers, you know, took off their thobes after, not the black ones, but <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Particularly from foreigners, you know. <laughs> brothers who used to wear thobes, all of a sudden they, they, they're out in, in trousers and what whatnot. You know what I mean? And and sisters who used to wear those, the abayas and, and all black, whatever, now they're out in, you know, they have a hijab and Western clothes. You know what I'm saying? You know, and this is mostly foreigners who got involved in that stuff. You know, it was always the black converts who held it down after 9-11. You know what I mean? Yeah, after 9-11 happened, before mm -hmm. the day before, I went to work in, in, in my thobe and my beard. The day after, I went to work in my, my thobe and my beard. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's the same thing. The day before. And on top of that, then, Go ahead. then you had the rise of individuals like who we talked about earlier, Sam. These the Sam Shimon's, the David Woods, mm. these characters, mm. they came up. They, they came. They started popping up. Yeah. This whole quote unquote they call it the Islamophobia industry or yeah, Christian the, the apologetics, apologetics or apologetics. Uh, yeah, the whole that whole thing didn't mm. even exist. Never heard of it previously. Mm. Then all of a sudden, this started coming up. Yeah, this kind of came out and, and based on the internet at the same time. All that stuff is not a coincidence. No, it's not. All that stuff is not. It can't be a coincidence. And, and the amount of money that's in the apologetics industry for a, a bunch of like uneducated, unresearched, like uncouth uh, people just to come up and assault Islam. And they get money. You know better than me anyways. You know the numbers and everything. Right, but I'll, I'll let you continue, bro. <laughs> So, I mean, for me, per, me on a personal level, I, you know, I started experiencing a, a crisis of faith. You know, I started experiencing a crisis of faith and I was really trying to hold on to my Iman. And, you know, I just, it really, it, it became a big struggle, a big struggle for me. Um, and, and then in now, would the, you say, 2011, would you say struggle beginning of two, faith. late 2010, would you, would you say the struggle of faith that you were going through at this time, was it directly related to the fitna, that, the fitna that we're talking about? Yes. Oh, yes. It was directly thank related you. to that. Thank you. It thank you. It was directly thank related you. to that. Tell the people. Let them know. Yes. Let them know. If that, if that, Allah knows, Allah knows best, but my, my estimation is, if that hadn't happened or and it hadn't been blown up like that, that episode of my life would never have taken place. And what I saw with other people, because I wasn't the only one, I just happened to, I just happened, it was just the cutter of law that I happened to run into these individuals, David Wood and Sam Shimon, and they took me in and, you know, wanted me to be a part of what they were doing. That's the only difference. But there was a, a, a thousand, a million different me's Mm -hmm. that nobody just didn't know about, you know, that exactly. they weren't on the internet or on, t on television or doing anything like that. They, they were just regular people mm -hmm. doing regular things. So, yeah, 
so uh, that yeah, exactly. That was di directly tied into that. It was Bang. directly tied into uh, concentrated war against Islam after nine eleven, per Bang. perpetrated by the you know a, a conglomerate right wing politics, mm -hmm. um, low key left wing liberals too. Mm -hmm. They just they're just a little bit more slick and quiet about it than the right wing. But I I, I, I just say politics, you know, Western politics, um, evangelical Christianity, and fundamentalist fundamentalist Christianity, um, it and Zionism, and the Zionists played a part in this also. If you if you don't think they played a part in it, you, you don't know what their capabilities are, and all this 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 trinity <laughs> this trinity came together to try to destroy islam yep yeah or at least to try to make, to, to make it as at least to, to make it as weak as, as weak as possible so it has no effect on or it has no effect on the society exactly exactly that is not an accident i don't care what anybody says there's no way you are living proof that the results are um are proof of the the what you might call it the whole plot against the dawa yeah. you're living think about it if if, if the, fact, the if, fact that you said they're is the uh, is yeah 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 i'm just you know people want to speak to me because my little background but like it, there was other means mm -hmm. but if if, if the dawa was islam and the islam was the dawa and then the dawa islam that was the mindset so if the dawah get if you destroy the dawah, you're if you deface you've made Islam look unattractive. Where else can I go? Where where am I going to go to now? The 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 masjids being built by the immigrants, by the Sufis, by the Tabalikis, mm -hmm. you know, by the Ikhwan, you know, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to go there and they're six me and not going to embrace. They didn't embrace me because that's exactly what happened. I started going to other mas masjid and. That whole dynamic that existed with the Salafis didn't exist there. Exactly. There was no brotherhood. Exactly. I went from having dozens of friends and brothers who I spoke to and called, and we went over each other's house and we, we hung out, and to being in these other masajid. And you know, if you get a salam, you're lucky. <laughs> if you get if you get a you know a salam alaikum, how you doing, brother? Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, see you next time. See you. See you at Fajr. See you, yeah. awesome. That yeah. if you get that, then you're lucky. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's <laughs> what you got. Yeah. And so, like I said, I started I experience a, a crisis of faith at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm living with the kufar, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm forced to because financially I don't have. I, I'm not allowed. I'm fighting to have parental rights as a father. Um, and the whole time, you know, I'm looking forward to having a child. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have a child. I'm gonna raise my child in Islam. I'm gonna raise my child upon the Sunnah, and then that take, that gets taken away. Mm -hmm. That's that whole that that hope is destroyed, you mm -hmm. know. And yeah, Subhanallah. Yes, of course you have to accept the cutter of Allah. You have to accept because everything is a test. Life mm -hmm. is a test. You have to accept the cutter of Allah. But at that point in my life, I just I wasn't there yet. Yep. It just wasn't there yet in my life, at that point in my life. And, um, and I, let, I let my Islam go. And I wasn't ready to, and, and in fact, I would even go further to say that when I, when I, and I analyzed what happened, I was almost mad at Allah. Mm -hmm. I admit yep. that. But I didn't want to be mad at Allah. I can't blame Allah. So I, I just I blame the Ummah. Mm -hmm. I blame the Dean. I blame the the community. So I'm not going to blame Allah, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna blame you guys. It's mm -hmm. your fault all this happened. Mm -hmm. It's your it's you guys are dysfunctional. Uh, you know you made all these promises that you couldn't keep. Mm -hmm. So it's your fault. So and really this should be a know. lesson to black people, uh, especially especially in the West especially in the West, our problems are well recorded and well established. And they've been our problems for decades. 
And then Islam came, particularly in the 90s, started cleaning up our problems, and then suddenly we're right back to square one again. And a lot of our wounds are self-inflicted because we are the ones who allow foreigners to dictate to us what we should be doing in our communities. Somebody needs to tell me how Hassan Somali is in Philly right now running an entire com black community in Philly and he's not from that community. And, and he cannot go to any Somali community and do what he does, the same thing he does in that black community. Somebody needs to tell me how that happens. Somebody needs to tell me how Abu Khadija, all the way from Britain, can run and dictate what Islamic centers do here in North America. Somebody needs to tell me how a fatwa from Sheikh Rabi all the way in Saudi Arabia can cause black people to move in such a way that they take their dollars, their money, their family away from the Sajid in the black community. This. I, I can't, I can't even tell you this. You mm -hmm. probably can. Go ahead. I actually saw, I saw individuals who were quote unquote uh, pro SP in public mm -hmm. and then criticized behind behind closed doors. Behind closed so doors. in public will be you know yeah uh did you see the latest article did you see the latest post on Salafi talk did you see what uh with the, the translation of Sheikh Rabi the, and they would portray this thing in, in public and then mm -hmm. behind closed doors if they were with somebody that they trusted they would disparage the whole thing. Yeah. They knew that they knew something was wrong with it. Exactly. But everybody but was playing along with it. Exactly, 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 exactly. So we test them with Rabia. We test them because a, love, a, a sign of a person's sunnah is his love of Rabia. If he hates Sheikh Rabia, then he is a Mubtadi, ya Ikhwan. Or he is a Jahil. If he's a Jahil, teach him. Say, you don't know Sheikh Rabia? Let me tell you about Sheikh Rabia. But if he knows and he continues to speak against Sheikh Rabia or he finds a, 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 a sickness in his heart or some difficulty in his heart with Sheikh Rabi, then know this person is a person of bid'ah. In every age you have people like this, Ya Ikhwan. <laughs> الجرح والتعديل عند المحدثين وهو من علم الإسناد من علم الأسانيد أما الكلام في الناس هذا ليس جرحا وتعديلا هذا غيبة ونميمة فعليه من يتوب إلى الله عز وجل ويترك هذا العمل يزكوا أنفسهم أولا قبل أن يبحثوا عن عيوب الناس نعم right so in, in and the that's like that's, that's a form of hypocrisy. Yeah, well, you know, this, this right here is like, it shows the fear that they have in opposing the structure. And we're talking about that easier. Because they, they that, these fear tactics literally pit an ent entire communities against just regular people, regular dudes. You know what I mean? We're not talking, we're talking like just may maybe somebody has a, had a different opinion than Abu Khadija or something like that. But he's not a die. He's not somebody important. He's just Awam. The next day, they'll do a PDF on that person. Destroy their life. Destroy their life. How many lives have been destroyed like that? And when you see that, it has a psychological effect on the community. Because they, they mm -hmm. see uh, people's lives, like legit their lives and their livelihood. Remember, these guys destroyed even businesses in the Muslim community. Businesses. You know, you can't sell your books here. You can't uh, open a, a, what you call it, a shop here or whatever. They just, legit, they did this. They destroyed people's livelihoods. So they take the food, not only out of that Muslim man's mouth, but his Muslim wife's, his Muslim children's, you know, they take the food out of their mouths because of difference of opinion of some scholar that they don't know anyways, and they never met. SubhanAllah, 
I keep even I would even take it further. You had like almost spying and snitching. Yeah, of course. It was they, like spy, Like I heard it, uh, things like you know people people going people going back. You know, you know the brother listens to Bilal Phillips. You know, mm-hmm. like yeah. <laughs> things like that. Like I haven't heard of wives doing that to their husbands. Exactly. Like I'm divorced. I'm I'm get I'm getting a horse to Bilal Phillips or because he was listening to you know he went to he went to the conference mm. you know st- stuff like this you know and it was crazy it was it became it was insane. insane it was and i'm i'm very happy that you said that uh well i'm not happy that you left islam but i'm happy that you told the reason was because of this fitna this is directly linked because people don't believe it but this happened this really happened, you know what I mean? And it's and the fact that people are still I mean, defending it, it, these it, it, is uh, beyond. Well, you know, that's just the, the way it goes. I think. I think the only the only thing that can be done at this point is to to ignore these people. Is to, well, I mean, because there's enough facts out about what if there's enough facts out. Uh, uh, there's a collection of data out now. I refer to that data if you speak to a person. But I don't know if you could go back to before 9 11 place now. The thing is, this, this, I, I, I hear what you're saying about we should ignore uh, these people, and really we should. But for black people, it has to go way beyond that. And black people have to understand that. You understand? For black, the black people specifically, it has to go way beyond that. This should be a, a major lesson. You understand? Black people are the ones who have to take Quran seriously. Black people are the ones who have to make the hajjah. Black people are the ones who have to be fasting Mondays and Thursdays and spreading the slide. Like these, these simple core things that's what's important and if you stick to those core things then nobody can come to you with some nonsense about some man and make your religion the the scale based upon the statements of a dude because you're going to go back to the quran and the sunnah and this was what what was missing you know this was always what's missing in the black community the taking of quran very seriously the learning the Arabic language and taking it seriously. This, this, these are the things that we were missing the entire time. We were so dependent on other people to teach us our religion that we didn't take the time to learn the skills that we can learn the religion for ourselves. And at the very basic, it's learning the Arabic language and uh, learning Quran, bare minimum. And up until this very day, you know what you you remind me of um, a, a, a brother that I know from back in those days. He even told me he used to tell new converts when new converts would ask for advice. He would tell them, uh, "Well, start going to um, SalafiTalk.com." <laughs> that was the advice given to new reverts to go to uh, SalafiTalk.com to go to sal- yeah. SalafiTalk.net. <laughs> I mean, subhanAllah, you know. He might, as well, he might as well start packing his bags outside of Islam today, man. Never, ever, ever, you know. He, me, me, when I advise any new, new convert, I always tell them, get, uh, obviously get the Quran. That's the first book you need. You get the all book, Phyllis books, book of Fundamentals Tell Eat. Get Sheikh Lobani's book, um, Prophet's Prayer Described. And, and try to be in the message as much as possible. That's it. I never advise him to go to any website ever, 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 ever. ever. Never advise to to, to learn on, uh, Islam online. I, I advise I, when I see when I see new re, when I see new reverts online on Facebook or uh, different places. I tell them maybe you should you probably should take a break from being yeah. online right now. Yeah. This is not the place you want to be right now. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so sorry, to, but I, I, this dialogue is beneficial, right? So I want you to continue with your, your story because this this is so important that people need to understand, you know? So I want you to continue with your story. Go ahead. So so, so all of this happens and 
Um, so I'm kind of like, like, what am I, what's next now? Mm-hmm. What am I doing next? Cause I'm like, at this point, I'm like literally trying to, I'm trying to rebuild my life again. Mm-hmm. And I'm in, I'm in my thirties at this point, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm, I'm rebuilding it financially. I'm rebuilding it psychologically. I'm rebuilding it uh, from a religious standpoint. Because everything I just got done doing, I'm, you know, I'm done with that now. Yeah. And so, like I said, I'm not, I, I wasn't going to be a, uh, an atheist or anything like that. So I went back to church. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. that's what I knew. It, where, there's, no, there's nowhere else to go from here. Yeah. Go back mm-hmm. to church, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's what I did. Mm-hmm. And um, then on the online, I seen these individuals you know, they had the show Jesus or Muhammad, mm. Sam Shimon and David Wood. Yeah. And Jesus and I and I started watching the show. Mm. And um and you know, you know what they do. And yep. Everybody knows what they do. I mean yep. <laughs> actually what they do now, actually what they actually to be I don't know, to be to be a little bit more honest, what they do now, they weren't doing that back then, ten years ago. So mm-hmm. their whole thing has evolved now. It's become way it's like, it's like a, a more side sadistic. Yeah. yeah, it's become like a, a sadistic sideshow now. But yeah. at the beginning, like ten years ago, they were actually trying to be serious. Like yeah. you know, they, they were, you know, like we're seriously trying to refute Islam. We're seriously trying to call Muslims to, you know, and you had those individuals. You had James White and different people like him, these Christian apologists, and they were talking about Islam. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm checking this out. Like, these guys, are, these are Christian guys, they're talking about Islam. Mm-hmm. What do they got to say? And then they're giving their criticisms and their, and whatnot. And I'm just listening. So I sent a, a uh, email message to David Wood. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm a former Muslim. Mm-hmm. You know, and I watch guys, you know, I check you guys out. And I like some of the stuff you're talking about, what you're doing. And he invited me on the show. He sent yeah. the email back like, "Do you want to get on the show? We want to interview." Mm-hmm. Got on the show. They interviewed me, you know. And when I was on the show, they were like, "Why don't you stick around? Mm-hmm. We're going to do some more shows. Just yep. be, you, you can hang out on the, you can hang out on the panel. Mm-hmm. You don't have to say anything. Or if you want to come in and say something, that's fine." Yep. So I started doing that, and then just slowly by slowly, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in this now. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm part of this now, you know. Now, what what do you and think? Is, um, it was like finding. What do you think your appeal to the audience was? Like, why were they so happy to have you on the show? Like, what was it about you specifically that made them say that this guy's an ad asset to our audience? It was. It was. I was a double whammy. Mm-hmm. I was not only an ex-Muslim. But mm-hmm. I was black. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just so wanted you to say it. <laughs> you know. I just oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, just to say it. I know. I understand. I understand. Yeah, yeah. I knew right off yeah, the bat. I understand. That was it. <laughs> and and you're like black, black. You're not like uh, yeah. you know, like like a coon or you know one of these type of uh, you know what I'm saying. You're like you're a black, black, right? So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I, it wasn't like I wasn't coming. And I wasn't coming from like the I wasn't coming from you know Ivory League school and the, you know yeah. part of the Young yeah. Republicans Club or something like that. You know, <laughs> you know I'm from Detroit. I mean, yeah, you know, I'm, exactly. a, I'm a ex-Southern exactly. from Detroit. You know, yeah. so <laughs> so you know it it gave I just for them it gave them legitimacy. Exactly, it gave them a, a level of legitimacy. It's like oh, it's not just me. It's not some black guy and some uh, Assyrian guy saying this. Yeah, Look, he he's 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 he knows the he knows the the problems with these Muslims. He knows he knows how those people are. Mm-hmm. He knows how dysfunctional they are. Mm-hmm. You know, so so that's what that was. That's what that was about. And so I began that, and I felt like, well, maybe you know, um, because when I was Muslim, I. I had the intention and the goal to seek knowledge. Mm-hmm. So my plan was I wanted to go to Yemen, mm-hmm. to the Damage, and I was going to spend maybe a year or so 
and Damage and learn and perfect Arabic. Mm-hmm. And then I was going to try to get into a university, maybe in mm-hmm. Saudi. And so I was like, well, why don't I just carry that plan out in Christianity, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I enrolled in a seminary. Mm-hmm. And um, I started studying uh, the Bible and Christian theology and biblical studies. I got a mm-hmm. degree in biblical studies. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, well, I, hey, I'm in this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a, a church elder, pastor. Yeah. And um, so that's, that's the route I took. I ended up joining the church. Um, and I was in the church. I was in this particular church. And I left it. I left that church. Then I went to a different church. Mm-hmm. And I settled down into that church. Then I, you know, I found my wife. I got married. I built. I basically built my life up again. Mm-hmm. You know, started a brand new career. Had a wife. I'm in church. I'm respected. Everybody likes me because I'm the ex-Muslim. I'm the black ex-Muslim. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I got. I'm on television. I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm doing the thing. Like, like you know. This is what I was looking. This is the life I was looking for in Islam. Couldn't find it. Now I found it in Christianity. Now. When you left, and um, when you left Islam, yeah. like what what was the feeling that you had inside you? Was there like anxiety or like like what was what was going through your your mind and your heart at that moment when you made the decision to leave Islam? At that point in my life, that was like like I said, 2011. My mind state at that point was, I'm tired. I'm tired yeah. of mash and massage it. I'm mm-hmm. tired of I'm tired of the immigrants. I'm tired of the Negroes. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm just tired of these people. Yeah. I'm tired of this whole thing. I'm I'm Perfect done with description. this whole thing. Perfect description. I'm done with it. Yeah. Okay. So continue. Continue. So now you're living your life. You're, you're, this is what you wanted yeah. in Islam that you could not find. This camaraderie, this brotherhood, this ex- this um, acceptance. Continue. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, but slowly but surely, I began to see the cracks in this. You know, it's like I said. Um, I looked at these Christian apologist guys that I, I, I met, and I even seen some of the behavior in them that I saw in the Salafi community. You know, <laughs> they're, they're doing they're refusing. Other, yeah. <laughs> they're starting to refute, refute each other. They're they're gathering, you know, you know, yeah, they're gathering, uh, you know, followers amongst themselves, and their followers don't like their followers. You know, mm-hmm. they got these little clicks and everything, and mm-hmm. um, and then there was a the racial component. Mm-hmm. I started seeing, mm-hmm. I, I started seeing this racial, this whole racial thing, and this is before, you know, this is this is years before Trump comes in the office and the whole yep. tea party comes off. But I could see it coming. I could, you could, Around like, what you year was this that you, you uh, became? See step by step, step. Around what year was this? 2011. 2011. This is 2011. But you can, you can see yep. the... 2011. This yeah. is... A, yeah, because Obama was in office. This is Obama's time. You know... People making comments about I see the people making comments about Obama, Obama the uh, Antichrist. You know, this yeah. is they talk about in Christian circles. Obama's the Antichrist. Obama is mm-hmm. ushering in the new world order. Uh, Jesus is coming back soon. <laughs> uh, okay, um, uh, the the uh, the the Antichrist. He's going to be a Muslim. Um, <laughs> he's going to come and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and That's a this is the stuff that they're that talking about. And <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. You, you look at look it up. There's uh, there's speeches by well known. There's there's a, a set of books. A guy wrote a book, mm. and he started the whole thing off. Uh, he called it the and uh, um, and it's an organization he's involved with. They're actually missionaries. In the Muslim land, so they're missionaries over in Iraq and Syria right now. Mm-hmm. So they're over in Iraq and Syria right now. But when they came, when they come back to the United States, they write these books about how the Muslim, how uh, you know, the the, the Mahdi is going to be the Antichrist. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> and 
<laughs> so I took, I get involved in this church, right? And the church is a because at the particular brand of Christi, Christianity that I was involved in was called Calvinism. Yeah. And um, very, uh, so people would even say it's the Salafia of Christianity. It's yeah. the, it's very, like, you know. Puritan type for uh, About the, the, the Bible, taking the Bible very, very literal, very conservative, going yeah. back to original sources, getting rid of all the, the innovations of Christianity. Let's go mm -hmm. back to the Bible and to the early Christians, you know. And so I'm in this church, and the church is it's supposed to be a multicultural church, right? Mm -hmm. So you got you got African Americans, you got Africans, you got some uh, Asian, some Asians, even some Arabs, and everybody else is white. I started there's there there started to be troubles inside the church because the black folks were were feeling like they were being and they couldn't make any decisions. decisions were being made in the church and nobody cared about what the black people thought or anybody mm -hmm. else or the Africans or anybody else. It was just the white folks who called the shots. Yep. They, they had the bank account and they were calling the last the final shot. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like how the church runs today anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's how, how it works. And people yeah. started leaving the church. Mm -hmm. And I have. It's, very, it's funny how that pastor. works. It's funny mm -hmm. how that works in the churches and the massages. Yes, <laughs> I was close with the pastor, and he was he. The pastor was starch, right wing, mm -hmm. um, you know, Tea Party. He was all about that, yeah, and yeah. you know, people were making comments to me like. Black community needs is, you know, to be embraced conservatism for the, mm. you know, this type of, this type of, th this type of rhetoric was going on. Mm. And, and <laughs> I remember even, um, there was another church that was a mostly black church that we considered the sister church that we were linked up with. And the pastor and the, the pastor there and the pastor at my church got into a big argument and the pastor called him a racist. <laughs> oh, wow. And that was like a big deal. Yeah, he called him a racist, and he's like, you know, forget my phone number, don't speak to me no more, you know. Oh, and wow. you know, and that that became a controversy. And I knew Christians around the city in different places. I knew Christians around the country, really, because mm -hmm. I was doing the apolog. I was linked up with these uh, Christian apologists guys, mm -hmm. and I had spoken to a, another black Christian in a black area, and he was like you know, we consider your church a white church mm. because even though you got black people there, the leadership, the, the leadership, the leader is white and he does everything for the white people. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't consider it, you know, the black people. This is the same thing. People were in the church. People were mumbling in the church also. Now mm. I went back to the pastor and I was like, you know, I had a conversation with pastor such and such. And he said this and old boy almost cursed me out. Like he blew <laughs> up like, yeah. I was like, hold, well, hold on, man. I, I didn't say, I, I'm just it's telling not, what the conversation I had. Like, why yeah. are you getting angry at me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get angry at me for. Yeah. And that's, that was like, then I was like, uh, then Trump came in. Mm -hmm. Trump came, <laughs> Trump got elected. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the whole thing just like, it almost came to the, and when Trump came in, it was like, there was like, Christianity and politics became married yeah, to each together, other. Yeah. And well, it was to the point where people didn't even talk about Jesus. People weren't even talking about Jesus anymore. Yeah. Like, just, nobody was even talking about Jesus. Like I told you, they thought the uh the, the solution for black people was to become conservative. Mm -hmm. They didn't even they didn't even say anything about the gospel or Jesus or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, this conservatism, you know, mm -hmm. is the solution. Mm -hmm. And that whole thing became such a mess. And I even saw that even with the Christian apologists like Sam Shimon and David Wood, they started changing. Mm. They became, you know, that's when they, you know, uh, David Wood started making these videos. Eat, he was ripping out pages of the Quran, eating them, and he was dressing up and he was doing all this wild, Crazy. wacky stuff, you know. And I, and uh, yeah, and I'm like, man, I can't, I'm not down with that. I can't even, I took a break from the internet actually for a whole entire year. Mm -hmm. 
I just I turned off my I, I just I I turned off my accounts for Twitter. I turned off my accounts for Facebook, and I didn't. I wasn't making any videos on YouTube I did, for a whole entire year. Mm-hmm. And um, Sam Shimon came to me at that point, and he was like, "Man, you're not even active anymore. What's going on?" Mm-hmm. Like you know, I was like, "Man, I I, I just it just is, this is too much for me. You know, mm-hmm. this is not what I was. This is not what I came over here for." Yeah, it's a little nuts for me. And, and you know, he was trying to encourage me to write for the website he was writing for a website. This designist aspect of it, I mm. saw that aspect as well. So mm-hmm. I, then I saw the designist aspect of designing money, which I could never figure out. But the design, designers, designers were. I, don't, I, I never even heard of the part that the design play was with these Christian apologists who are going after Islam. Mm-hmm. That's their part of them giving the Christian apologists money and supporting them. Which I, again, I can't figure out who believes Jesus was, you know, they believe that Jesus is boiling in excrement. That's what yeah. they have inside their books. So can you, can you repeat Jesus that? Jesus is in hell, peace be upon purpose. him. So I, I was asking, I was asking. Oh, yeah. So in the, in the books, yeah, I was asking about the Zionists. Yeah, so, the, so the Zionists, mm-hmm. I saw, yeah, the, the Zionists were, I saw that they were in the background. They weren't speaking. The Christian apologists are the ones up front speaking, but they're in the background lending support. Wow. Especially with money. That's making crazy. donations to these to these organizations and to these individuals. Yeah, so, so, you know. So time out, time out, time out. Like, time out. Even to, time out. <laughs> right. So you're saying that the Zionists were funding the Christian apologists. And yes. we were recently talking about uh, this, the fitna, right? And there's no way that this fitna just happened organically. It's impossible. In my opinion, it's impossible. And you're now telling me that Zionists, for, uh, for a fact, are backing Christian apologists with their dollars in order to attack Islam. Yes. <laughs> um, the, you heard the, it the here. Christian network, a, <laughs> the Christian network ABN that, mm. um, that, that, was, that had Jesus, the Jesus and Muhammad show, mm. their headquarters is inside of a building owned by Jews. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's crazy. They're the renters. The building is owned by Jews. And so, yes. That's crazy. They're getting, so, they're getting moral support and financial support. From yeah. Zion. And so, that whole, that whole, that right wing Christianity in white, right, right is, is tied into politics. Mm-hmm. It's tied directly into politics and the politicians. Mm-hmm. And the politicians, of course, are Zionists. Well, George Galloway, I mean, um, John McTernan quoted you actually earlier. I mean, you, know, you, you had said Nazism and Zionism were two sides of the same coin. Well, they actually did mint a coin uh, to uh, use in the program, the, the Havara program, the deal. to ship Jews out of Germany. Here's the point. But do you think that some people might take offence to that? No, Zionism and Nazism, for a brief period of time, cooperated to get Jews out of Germany because both of them believed that Jews should not be in Germany. The Zionists believed they should be in Palestine for one set of reasons, and the Nazis believed but it for an entirely... But to say Hitler supported entirely... Zionism is surely a perversion. Uh, uh, well, and Zionism was about liberating Jews no, from persecution. It's not... Look, the, the Zionists were not Nazis, and the Nazis were not Zionists. And actually, living, if you look at the transcript, Livingston never said that they were. He said that they cooperated together, and they did. That's a matter of historical fact. He said, he, they support, you, he said, he said you, Hitler supported you, you Zionism. You don't actually need to bring the historian from... America, you could bring many historians from Israel. This is not a secret. It's only a secret to those now waking up to it. They were cooperating because they had the same idea that the European Jews should not be in Europe. They should be in Palestine. Now, what? So, for those of you... All all of that is mixed together. For those of you who are are slow in catching up, right, what the brother's essentially trying to tell you is that... The Zionists are doing two things at once, okay? They are funding people to attack Islam, even though the same people 
that are attacking Islam, they have no love for Jesus at all, like zero, right? The, uh, the Zionists and, and, and uh, Orthodox Jews in general, they actually have a disdain for Jesus. You understand? Like you were saying, that they believe that Jesus is, is, is burning in boiling hot excrement uh, and all these kind of things. And at the same time, they cushion themselves with that Zionist money from attacks from Christians. So they will always have Christians defending the Zionists. Why? Because that money gets funneled to attack Muslims and who's giving them the money? The Zionists. And whoever pays the paper names the tomb. And this is what Brother Abu is so telling Think about me. it. All That's, these, what? <laughs> That's what. Think about all these, all these, all these famous, all these famous Christian apologists. Have you ever heard them talk about Judaism? Never. As far as trying to refute Judaism. Never, ever, ever. But Jews, Jews don't believe in the Trinity. No. Jews don't believe that uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, is a deity. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Jews have their own thing where they reject Christianity, just like just like Muslims. Mm -hmm. But they concentrate on Islam and they never say anything about them. Yeah. Never. Because they can't. You exactly. can't because they can't criticize them. It's exactly. not allowed. Exactly. And, so, and what and what does what does also all this. What this also sorry, what this also does is it gives um, the Zionists a voice in criticizing Islam directly because Jews in general, because of the history between Muslims and Jews, they can't really say anything bad about Islam. It was always the Muslim um, empires and caliphates that protected Jews. Always. Whenever, whenever the Jews were being expelled from Europe, where were they going? They were going to the Muslim lands. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And on top of that, uh, Islam is a purely monotheistic religion, so the Jews can't say anything about Islam because they believe that the if monotheistic religions are from God. That's what they believe. Mm-hmm. In fact, there's a there's a famous um, Jewish rabbi on the internet who talks routinely about, and a lot of Muslims follow him. Mm -hmm. And he he says that you know the Muslims are monotheistic, like you said. He, he said he said that from their standpoint, the the Muslims will enter into paradise. I know since you've had, there's been two main branch offs from Judaism that state Abraham in their, in their beliefs, that would be Christianity and um, Islam with the Muslims. So you've got the Christians and the Muslims. Um, the Muslims from, now this is just my vague understanding of it. You probably have a much better understanding of it than I do. The Muslims hold that Jesus was just a prophet of God and was not God in the flesh. So based on the, the understanding of the two groups, who would, which one would fit closer into Judaism? Would it be the Muslims or, or Christians? Well, this is not even a contest. So the Muslims, because they believe in one true God, they really worship one God and one God alone, and they have not allowed themselves to become defiled with the doctrine of the Trinity. Islam is by far the closest faith to Judaism. It's more than just worshiping one God, but Muslims believe that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were prophets. If you don't believe that, you can't be a Muslim. Muslims rightfully reject the hideous, the odious views of Paul and the, the gospel writers, with the exception of Luke, in vicarious atonement. The notion that a man could die for the sins of the wicked, that's the motherload of bad ideas. Muslims correctly detest the teachings of Paul that Jesus could have died for anyone since. Muslims, as it turns out, do not believe that Jesus ever died, but rather ascended, and he was never crucified, although it just appeared that way. So it's more than just believing in one God, but they, Muslims believe that the, the prophets of Israel are 
were all genuine prophets of God. Islam is not a cult as Christians like to portray them, but they are, there are different views within the orthodoxy of Islam. So there are some different views within orthodoxy. I'm not talking about what Muslims would consider complete heresies, and there are quite a number of them. Muslims believe in one God, and therefore it has a unique status. So Islam rejects of course rejects the doctrine of the Trinity. In fact, the, the Quran explicitly rejects the notion of worshiping three, explicitly. Any kind of partnership called in Arabic a shirk is the most grotesque iteration of idolatry, meaning that you worship God, but in addition to God, there's a partnership with some other divine being. To them, it's that's the worst thing you can possibly do. And it's the exact same thing you would find in Judaism. I should have no other gods upon my face, Exodus chapter 20. I haven't been elected as the chief spokesman of Islam yet. I'm waiting for my, um, my postcard in the mail from Riyadh. But Islam regards Jesus as a prophet, not any kind of prophet. There is in Islam a high order of prophet called the Rasul, but it's a prophet. But a Rasul simply means someone who came to bring a Sharia, which means a, a message. And they believe that message that Isa, that Jesus had was for the Jews. So therefore, the, the Muslim idea of Jesus, something so completely different than Christianity, that you know, to us, that's that's not an it's that's a non-issue, and that's why Judy, Jews don't feel. I'm not the spokesman for the Jewish people. I should be, but I'm not. But Jews are not really offended by Islam. On the contrary, we feel you know that that's really respectful. But they don't think that Jesus was divine or died for anybody's sins or could die or anyone could die. And rather, Muslims appeal to God's mercy. And, and hope that they would be forgiven for their sins. So it's, it's completely different than Christianity. Because they're monotheistic and they don't worship the idols. Mm -hmm. And that they, they have a system of, because if the Gentile is a monotheist, he has a, a system of law and he doesn't eat the uh, dead meat, then they believe he, the, the Gentile will enter into paradise. Mm -hmm. So from their standpoint, the Muslims will enter a paradise. Mm -hmm. So like you said, they can't criticize Islam from that standpoint, yeah. but it's the politics of Zionism. Mm -hmm. The politics of Zionism causes the conflict. Exactly. So, so, so you can almost say because they can't criticize the, re, uh, the religion of the Muslims, but they have this issue with the, the Zionism, mm -hmm. they use the Christians as the proxy. Exactly. So while, while, while they're playing three-dimensional chess, y'all Muslims are still trying to figure out how to play checkers. And then you wonder why you guys are fighting each other so much. I keep telling y'all it's because other people <laughs> are paying other people to get you to fight. Duh, and you heard it here first. Abu Yazid, eyewitness, Zionist, paying apologist Christians to attack Muslims, even though Jews don't like Christians. Go ahead, continue. Sorry, I just have to get that and, out. And I thought, I thought that was like the craziest thing because you had all these, that's when I started figuring out this, oh, this doesn't have anything to do with theology. This doesn't have anything to do with God and theology and Jesus and going to heaven or, or Dean or religion or Dean, as we will say, mm -hmm. this, it's not about that. That's what they, that's the cover. That's what mm -hmm. the out, the thin veneer on the outside, that's what it's about. But it's really about politics. Yeah, and what, uh, the whole thing is, is politics. And the uh, which my part? What's his name? The Black Panther guy. I uh, no, not H. Oh, what's his name? Oh my gosh, don't tip my tongue. The one, the one who got assassinated, the first Black Panther got assassinated in his house. What's his name again? Eldridge Cleaver. Um, not Eldridge Cleaver. He's no, not Eldridge Cleaver. Uh, I think I know who you're talking about. Um, before him. Oh, Fred. Hampton. They just did the movie on him, Black. Fred Hampton, yes. They Fred did, Hampton. Did the movie. Fred, oh, yeah. Fred Hampton, he said, politics is warfare without weapons. Mm. 
and warfare is politics with weapons. Mm. You know, we're at war. This is warfare. Jews are acting like they are at war. That's why they can hire other people to disparage you because now they have plausible deniability. They act in accordance to warfare. It's y'all Muslims <laughs> that are running on the streets begging these same people to protect you from Islamophobia. Y'all just look from that's the, We talked about that earlier. That's the crazy part because mm -hmm. a lot of Muslims think, they think, oh, the liberals are going to protect us from the conservatives. Yeah. But the, the liberals and the conservatives are both Zionists. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why Jews don't care which party is <laughs> in because they're getting what they want anyways. It's y'all who haven't figured it out, man. Y'all are slow. And you didn't ask black people or, or, or um, indigenous people about this enemy. You just came and started doing things you saw on TV, acting in, in accordance to what the enemy wants you, the way the enemy wants you to act. But anyways, continue, bro. Go ahead, man. <laughs> yeah, so so slowly but surely, I'm starting to see, you know, oh, this whole, this uh, apologetic stuff, this is thin veneer of it. Um, this is politics. Uh, okay, I really don't want to be involved in this anymore. I'm just going to just be, you know, just be Christian and just live my life. And, but then then was during the, the Trump Trump uh, stage, mm -hmm. and the and, the, and then the so called black church was completely ineffective, mm -hmm. completely ineffective. And, you know well, that that's that's actually the purpose of the black church. Mm -hmm. It's to be ineffective. Yes, you know you understand. It's been designed like that since the first black churches. <laughs> I, I even saw it in Detroit, and, and I know it's the same in any other city, in any other place. You know, yeah. the people would get so, every couple of years, people would get so excited because a new mega church would get built. Mm. So you had all these mega churches getting built in Detroit. and But, you know, it's, Detroit has one of the highest levels of poverty of any city in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have all this poverty, but you, you're getting excited because they build a, a mega church. Mega church, yeah. You know. And then they, they build the mega church, and then for maybe a year, you're all decided, and then, you know, that's it. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of years later, they'll build another mega church for you to get excited about again. But they're not going to build any jobs. <laughs> they're not going to build any factories. They're not going to build a university. They're not going to build, you know, anything that's going to have economic, you know, make the, the area economically, you know, viable. Yeah. To bring the, er bring the area back to life. Because uh, building a mega church is not going to bring a ghetto back to life. Yeah, <laughs> economically, you know, you can't. Everybody can't go work at the mega church, you know. Yeah, it's you not know, gonna it's bring gonna be the ghetto back to life, nor will it bring bring life to the ghetto, you know. No, yes. no, and, and it doesn't do that at all. The life out of the ghetto. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Right. Yeah, because it sucks. It, it it sucks the you build that mega church and its finances out of the hands of people who are already poor, exactly, and working class. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you're sucking all these resources of this money to build this gigantic mega church, mm -hmm. and it's not like it's a you know a black construction company. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's going to be a construction company from some other people from some mm -hmm. other place. Mm -hmm. They're going to come and build it for you. They're going to take your money and build it for you, and then take that money that you you know all the all the um, you know fundraising that you did. Yeah. Take that's that right. money and take it back Italians, out to the suburbs. And Portuguese or whatever. So they can come build your church and then make make the Italians and Portuguese rich, and you still remain poor. Yes, and yeah. now you you got a big pretty church. And the message you got a big pretty church. The message to become the church is the same playbook, same. You know what I mean? Yes, because now we got we got we have uh, we got mega moss now. Yep. You know, every single day I'm getting these yeah. these adverts on my Facebook about build the biggest masjid in New York. Uh, build, a, you know, this masjid in Norway. Build this, like, what? What? Do we really need a, the biggest masjid in New York? Do we need that? Do the Muslims need that? Seriously? That's what they need right now in New York? With all the the, 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 the crime and the poverty and the drugs, and that's what that's what the Muslims need? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's now, now you, you see how you have, you, have, um, you know, the evangelists and the way that they've gone and what they've done to the black community and whatnot, 
now we have the masjid industrial complex. Same thing, begging the people for money. And I'll give you another, I'll give you another aspect to that. Mm -hmm. All right, you build the mega mosque mm -hmm. and you only, you hoard it for yourself. Yep, yep. And I'll give you another thing, not a single black person in any one of those advertisements mm -hmm. in New York City. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. want to build the biggest mosque in New York, and you don't even have a black person and to come and help you. I go into bus yes, like I could see if, if you built a mega mosque and you know, and okay, you send a bus, send a bus down to an inner city masjid. Let's say, man, you know what? You know your kids don't have anything down here. Put the kids on the bus. We're gonna take them up to you know, mega mosque, uh, masjid, masjid al al mega al mega luxury. Yeah, <laughs> and. You're going to let them sit in the classes with our kids and let mm. them play basketball with our kids and have the court with our kids. Mm. You can share, you can share it with us. Mm. You, don't, you don't even do that. Don't even do that. It's, it's exclusively, yeah, it's exclusively for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what at the exclusion of everybody else. And that's why I keep saying. Because all you care about is you. Black nationalism. You care about yourself. With, with, with uh, in the, all these in, different uh, groups. In your who have no, no tribe taking our money, but they will not include us in the, in the community. No issues taking our money to build mega mosque in New York. You, build, you make an advertisement in New York City, not a single black person in your advertisement, in New York City, New, in New York, one of the largest populations of black people in the West, and no representation of black people at all, right? But you want us to donate. Anyways, that's a different story altogether. But anyways, yeah, keep going, bro. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, and all the time you and you and you're posting on uh, social media, there is no racism in Islam. Hey, no racism in Islam. I mean, yeah, there is no racism in Islam. That's a true statement. But you are racist and a Muslim. <laughs> that's true. That that is true. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it has, it's not going. That's not that's not going to cut it. You have to yeah. have some action behind you. For the words to really mean something, there has to be some action behind the words. Exactly. Know? Exactly. We, we, we ain't with your lip service anymore. That's just not... Like, we're not feeling that anymore. It's just like uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Mahdiya, Mad Madia, that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala criticized the Jews because they had the Torah mm -hmm. and then they started coming to the Prophet for judgment mm. and give them judgment. They wouldn't follow the Torah. They wouldn't follow the judgment of the Prophet mm. They just held the book and wouldn't follow the judgments in the book. Yep. And unfortunately, for many of the Muslims, we're becoming just like that. That we have the book. It's not we. And we it's, memorize the book. And we recite not, the book. It's certain Muslims from certain Eastern areas of the world. <laughs> because we just got the book, right? <laughs> Us black folk, we yes. just got it. We don't have no yeah, legacy the book. You're right. of generations of people studying the book and scholarship like that. We don't got it. Like, Y'all came out here like that, right? Y'all came out here, you know, puffing up your chest and talking about how, how great, uh, you know, your legacy is was back in your country. Y'all did that, right? <laughs> so when you say we, mm -hmm. we mean you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, I'm trying to be. Poli I'm trying to be a little political. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wink, wink. Um, wink, wink. Uh, 